WhatsApp has come to dominate the global instant messaging space, yet why do they still struggle to catch a breath in America? Welcome to Hari Sabi's. WhatsApp actually goes back a lot longer than you would think, all the way back to 2009. It all started when Brian Acton and Jan Coombe left Yahoo in September of 2007. After quitting their jobs at Yahoo, they would go take some time off in South America and then return and apply for jobs at Facebook but then both be rejected. In January of 2009, after buying an iPhone, the two realized the potential of the App Store. Soon after, the two would meet up with Coombe's friend Alex Fishman in San Jose and discuss a new type of messaging app. The idea was to show statuses next to the individual names of people. Obviously the idea needed work, but this is where they started. They needed an iPhone developer, and they would meet the Russian developer Igor Solomenikov through a website called rentacoder.com. Com would then name the app, and as you probably already guessed, it was named after the phrase what's up. On February 24th, 2009, he would incorporate WhatsApp Inc. in California. But when early versions of WhatsApp kept crashing, Coom actually strongly considered giving up and getting a real job. Acton encouraged him to stay just a couple of more months before completely quitting. In June of 2009, Apple would launch push notifications. This pinged the user's notifications about the app even when they weren't using the app. This is very simple nowadays, but back then this was a pretty big thing. Coom instantly updated the app to accommodate for push notifications. He allowed users to get pinged whenever their friend's status would change. And soon after, he would release WhatsApp Beta 2.0. Until now, there were some active users here and there, but after this release, their user count would significantly increase to 250,000 people. At this point, Acton was also working on another startup, but he would stop working there and fully devote his time to WhatsApp. On top of this, he would actually be successful at persuading five of his former Yahoo friends in investing $250,000 in seed funding into WhatsApp. After doing this, Acton would officially join the company and become a co-founder. And this same month, they would exclusively launch the app on the App Store after months in the beta stages. Coombe would hire a friend in LA, Chris Peffer, to develop a Blackberry version which would come out in two months. The app was very cheap to run, in fact, the only real cost that they had was sending the verification text messages at the beginning. And this is why they used to charge 99 cents per year, mainly to cover these costs. In December of 2009, they would add the ability to send photos. And from then, it really took off, and by early 2011, it would be in the top 20 apps on the App Store. And in April of 2011, Sequia Capital would invest $8 million for a little more than 15% of the company. By February of 2013, WhatsApp would have 200 million monthly active users and 50 staff members. A little later, Takia Capital would invest another $50 million into WhatsApp with a valuation of $1.5 billion this time. And on February 19, 2014, Facebook would announce that they are going to be acquiring WhatsApp for $19 billion. To this date, this is Facebook's largest acquisition. They paid for it in $4 billion in cold hard cash, $12 billion in Facebook shares, and $3 billion in restricted stocks for Coombe and Acton. At the time, this was also the largest acquisition of a venture-backed company. Sakia Capital got a 5,000% return on their investment. And here's a quick fact, Coombe actually signed the paperwork to Facebook's acquisition on his former welfare office where he used to get food stamps from. And since then, WhatsApp has really exploded. In fact, over 50% of the population in Germany, Brazil, and Malaysia have WhatsApp. And that was in the end of 2016, by now, many other countries have probably joined the list. But the US has pretty much always lagged behind. In that same statistic, only 16% of the US population had a WhatsApp. So what went wrong? The first point is that most Americans have unlimited calls and texts on their phones already. You really can't get a phone plan in America from the big companies that doesn't have unlimited talk and text. And now, after T-Mobile has really increased the competition for cheaper data, most people have unlimited data as well. The price of unlimited everything in America has significantly come down. Even at Verizon, you can get a single line at $75. A couple of years ago, even from cheaper providers, you could only get a couple of gigabytes for that price. One of the main reasons that people use WhatsApp outside of the United States is to save on SMS charges. 
but when you already have unlimited texting, it really defeats the purpose of getting WhatsApp. For Americans, it's actually more expensive to text through data because most Americans have unlimited talk and text but not everyone has unlimited data as of yet. But that's probably going to change as well in the next couple of years. When one of the main reasons to get WhatsApp is not really applicable to most Americans, it makes sense that most of them don't really have it. One of the main reasons that WhatsApp is so popular in European countries is that Europeans travel a lot internationally, especially a lot more often when compared to Americans. The Eurozone and proximity of countries really makes international traveling much easier in Europe. For Americans, first of all, there's simply no reason to leave America. All the opportunities that you can think of already exist within America. If you want to act, you can go to Hollywood in California, or if you want to do finance, you can go to New York up in the East. The only reason that Americans leave America is vacation or business purposes. And when you're only on vacation for a week or two, you really don't feel the need to text anyone back home when you're on vacation enjoying Paris or London. And then we have frequent international business travelers in America, and these people are pretty much the only people in America who take advantage of WhatsApp. The other thing is that iPhones are very popular within America. Most people have iPhones and people will just use iMessage if they're so inclined to actually text through data. In fact, iPhones are so popular in America that people usually get mad at the one friend who doesn't have an iPhone. For some reason, there's always that one guy who makes an iMessage group chat green. And even during international travel, you can just use iMessage to contact family. So the incentive of data texting really doesn't apply to most Americans. Mainly because Americans don't really travel internationally and if they do, they can probably just use iMessage. It's very uncommon to find an American caught outside of the country who doesn't have an iPhone and wants to text through data. One of the other reasons that WhatsApp is so popular in developing countries like China and India is to contact friends and family who have moved abroad. The iPhone is not at all popular in India, so iMessage really wasn't a viable choice. As a result, WhatsApp was the perfect app for this use case. But the thing is, most Americans don't have friends or family outside of the country. America is a big country with vast opportunities, so there really is never a reason to move away. And the thing is, for whatever reason, if you ever need database texting and iMessage is not viable, there are so many other alternatives. And it's not like Americans don't use messenger apps, it's just that they don't use it for the same reasons that people use WhatsApp. And when Americans are trying to use a messenger app, they will most likely turn to Facebook Messenger or Google Hangout which already have a stronghold on the US market. With classic SMS, iMessage, and messenger apps like these, Americans have everything they need to contact anyone they need to in the world. So they really don't need a third service like WhatsApp that doesn't do anything different or better. And finally, Americans love their privacy a lot. If there is any chance of their personal space being compromised, they don't want to use the product. WhatsApp was literally based on users being able to tell if their friends are online or when they were last online. Many Americans see this as an invasion of privacy and even though you can turn it off, there are other concerns as well. You can view anyone's profile picture and send anyone any form of media, you just need their phone number. You don't need to send a friend request and you don't even need to have them in your contacts. Just a couple of months ago, there was that huge issue of that Israeli company hacking into WhatsApp. Apparently, they were even able to read the digital communications of iPhone and Android users. One of the main reasons that Americans switch to messengers is for privacy reasons. And when WhatsApp is at most as safe as just text messaging, there's really no incentive for Americans to use it. As a result, Americans stick to good old SMS or things that they're used to like Facebook Messenger. WhatsApp is a pretty simple idea but solves a pretty big issue worldwide and helps millions of people. The problem is that people in America aren't affected by the issues that WhatsApp solves in the first place. And for the Americans that WhatsApp is useful, there's already so many alternatives that they're used to. And this is what has really caused WhatsApp to struggle in its home country. But WhatsApp is starting to catch some momentum with business users and it might spread to their families and eventually become popular within the US as well. The rest of the world really seems to love it, so maybe Americans just haven't been introduced to it yet, and if they are, maybe they'll love it as well. But that's all I have for you guys on WhatsApp, make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari, I'll see you guys on the next one.